Hi there, it's Jeff from Hot Tub Owner HQ, and I recently had a comment on the channel where someone said I put the bro in bromine, and I think that was a compliment, but it occurred to me that as much as I talk about bromine in my videos, I've never actually done a video exclusively about bromine and why I prefer it and how to use it and all of that other stuff. So that's what we're getting into right now. So first of all, how often do you add bromine to your hot tub? And these days, I prefer a floater. I know in some of my earlier videos, I railed against them, but I did uh, try one and then I changed my mind. I do take it out when I'm getting in the hot tub. I'll just set it on the edge here so that it's not bobbing into me uh, when the jets come on. And then I prefer these bromine tablets. And I put about three of them in this floater, just like that. And I do that about once a week. If I'm experiencing, uh, you know, like if my daughters are having a bunch of friends over and it's getting a lot more use than normal, I might do as many as six tablets. Somewhere between three and six is probably going to be about right for most people, though. And like I said, that's about, I do that once a week. That's really all there is to it in terms of my sanitizer. The next question people have is, is how soon can you get in your hot tub after you put the bromine in? Now, I'd say with the tablets, it's not going to be as critical as if you're adding powder or liquid. The tablets, of course, slowly dissolve as the water gets inside of that floater. So really with the tablets, it's going to be almost immediately. But uh, normally, if you're adding liquid or powder, you want to wait about 30 minutes. The next question people have is they hear things like, well, is, are, is bromine bad for you? And it, it is considered to be toxic in high levels, uh, just like chlorine is. It is not, however, considered a carcinogen. You don't want to get bromine powder or liquid on your skin. I did, if you noticed, I did handle those tablets with my hand, um, you know, and I just kind of rub them off at, when I'm done with it. If you want to be extra careful, you could use gloves when you handle bromine tablets. Um, but essentially in high, high doses, it can irritate the eyes if, if you're getting vapors in the eyes. If you overdo it in your hot tub, definitely don't use it. Make sure you dip that test strip in and check the levels before you get in. And if the levels are way too high, don't get in. You're gonna need to wait a day or two for that level to drop before it's gonna be safe to get in there. But under normal use, you're not gonna have an issue with bromine. Now, the other thing that people wanna know, of course, is is bromine better for your hot tub than chlorine? And I prefer bromine in my hot tub over chlorine, as you've probably heard me say many times, unless you're brand new to the channel. And the reasons, there's two main reasons. One is that chlorine breaks down quickly in sunlight and heat. And of course, with the cover off, I'm getting a lot of sunlight here, but more importantly, the hot tub is really hot. I, I set mine to 98. You might set yours as high as 104. That's going to destroy chlorine very, very quickly. And you're going to have to add it a lot more frequently throughout the week than you do bromine. And with bromine, of course, it also is a lot easier on the eyes. It's easier on the skin. You don't get that chlorine smell like you do at a public swimming pool. But because of the heat, really, that's the main thing that makes me not want to use chlorine in my hot tub. That's why chlorine is popular in swimming pools. It's also less expensive than bromine, but if you're having to add it twice as often, it kind of negates that. But that's why chlorine is a great choice in swimming pools. Bromine is the better choice most of the time for hot tubs. The next thing people want to know is, well, how does bromine work as a sanitizer compared to chlorine? And what chlorine does is it oxidizes the water. Now, they're just like OxyClean, it just kind of oxidizes and sanitizes and destroys the bacteria in there, whereas bromine works through a process called ionization. It ionizes and breaks down on kind of a cellular level the contaminants that are in your, in your hot tub water. The end result is really the same, but how they get there is totally different. People also want to know whether or not it's okay to switch from chlorine to bromine in their hot tub. And the answer is yes, of course it's okay to switch. However, you don't ever want to mix dry chlorine and dry bromine or liquid or, or tablet. You don't want to mix the two chemicals together. And if you do, if you have been using chlorine as a sanitizer in your hot tub, you either want to drain your hot tub and then fill it back up again and then start fresh with bromine, 
or you want to wait several days until when you dip that test strip in the water, you don't get any chlorine residue showing up on that test strip. Then it's okay to go ahead and switch to bromine. But the ideal method is to actually wait until you drain it and fill it back up again and then start fresh. And then, of course, the next thing that people want to know is, well, if I'm using bromine as my sanitizer, is it okay to use chlorine as my shock? And the answer is, yes, it is. And I know that's surprising, considering I just said don't mix bromine and chlorine sanitizer together, and it's not okay to just switch from one to the other right away in your water. But shock is different. It's formulated different than sanitizer. So I do indeed use chlorine shock in my hot tub. I add about a quarter cup of this, usually just a capful. I don't measure it with a measuring cup. I kind of eyeball it, but a capful of this is probably about right about once a week for most normal hot tub use. Again, if you have uh, a big party and there's people getting in and out of the hot tub all night long, you may want to shock it the next morning, even if that's not part of your normal schedule, just because the more people that use it, the more contaminants are getting in the water and the more likely it is you're going to need to shock your hot tub or sanitize it or both more often. But that's what I do. And again, I use bromine tablets and chlorine shock. And the reason I don't use a non-chlorine shock is I just, I have used it before, but I find that the water gets a little cloudy. It's not as clear. The chemical levels are still fine. So it's, it's just a visual thing. It's just an aesthetic thing, but I don't like how it looks. It just doesn't look as clean as when I use a chlorine shock. And again, just like what I mentioned earlier about getting into the hot tub after you add bromine, either liquid or powder, do wait a good 30 minutes after you shock your hot tub before getting in, just to make sure that it's fully dissipated in the water and that the levels are not too high. Another common question people have about bromine is that sometimes certain hot tub manufacturers tell them not to use bromine in their hot tub. And there's really, there's two reasons for this. So certainly it's not recommended in wooden hot tubs because of its corrosive effect on the wood. Most of us though don't have a wooden hot tub. We probably have one just like this. And so the other reason that certain manufacturers don't recommend bromine is because of the corrosive effects that bromine can have. Now chlorine can have those same effects as well, but in some ways bromine can be worse over time. And so they're concerned about repairs and particularly warranty repairs, which is why they don't recommend them. I still like bromine better because it's easier on the skin and it's easier on the eyes and, and the nose. And I feel like over time, you know, the, the pump and the heater and the, those things are going to, those things are going to need to be replaced over time anyway. I may as well enjoy the water while I can. Of course, if your hot tub is under warranty, I'm not suggesting you void the warranty by using bromine if your manufacturer says not to. I'm just telling you what I think. But those are the really the reasons that a few manufacturers don't recommend bromine. They just don't want to deal with possible warranty headaches on the equipment down the road. Now, before I go, let me kind of show you what I do here. So I just take a test strip, I dip it in for about two seconds, I shake off the excess water, and then I just kind of match it up here to the little guide here. And you can see they, they have chlorine and bromine combined on one color chart here. As you can see, I'm actually probably a little bit low. It is a little bit on the pink end, but it needs to be just a hair more purple, which probably tells me since I just put those tablets in there that they haven't had enough time yet to dissolve. And probably by the time I check it again, maybe this evening or the next time I use it, I'm sure it'll be just fine. But that's really all I do. I dip it in for two seconds, shake off the excess water, hold it up to the color chart and adjust if it's not matching where it says OK. Anyway, I hope I put the bro in bromine in this video for you. And I hope I answered all of your questions about bromine. If I didn't, leave me that comment down below. Right now, I'm kind of getting overwhelmed with comments, but keep them coming. It's just going to take me longer before I'm able to answer them. The same with emails if you're emailing me. I'm way behind and I am apologize for that. I'm getting to them as quickly as I can. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It sends a great signal to YouTube. And then smash that subscribe button and the bell notification button too. But with that, I'll see you in the next video.